this conference by our Aspen High Level. Just like to sound the room and get a sense of where you are this morning. Creating a future. Creating a future. Okay, love it. Great. Creating a future. What else? High level. You have a movement that's not going to be stopped, and you better be able to explain it. Love it. So to explain the movement. Connection. Very nice. Connection. Speak to that for just a moment, if you would. Connection. Connection on all levels. I mean, so the idea of this whole movement, pretty much, is to be connected in a way that doesn't have limitation, right? So we're using the technology to be connected to what we call our exchange of currency or Beautiful. trades Beautiful. or whatever that is. And the concept deeper than that is the true, hopefully, changing our culture to be connected to, once again, to the importance of shared humanity. Change our culture. Fantastic. Oh, Anyone nice. else? Co-visioning to rein in the Great Awakening. Was it co-visioning you said? Co-visioning. Love it. That's Love brilliant. it. Great one. Co-visioning. To what again? To rein in the Great Awakening. To rein in? The Which Great is... Awakening. Rein in. The Great Awakening. Oh, okay. We're obviously not here for little things. Um, <laughs> what else? Are there any key thoughts of Push why we're getting forward? Push humanity forward. Mine is not so profound. I just wanted to know what it is I don't know. Okay. You, want, you want to know what it is? Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's more profound than you think. That's, that might be the most profound of all. Okay. Yeah. So, so you want to know what you don't know, right? Yeah. You want to know what you don't know. Great. Mine's a little closer to that. I saw the list of speakers here and had the time to get here, so I came here. So, so the people speaking. I want to learn from them. So you want to learn from the people. Great. All right. So here's an open question. And we could spend more time on this, but we've got about 50 minutes. So if we make progress, okay, individually and collectively towards these aims, and you walk out of this room when we're done with a clear sense of direction and a clear understanding of the priorities to support these high-level aims, is it worth our investment together in time and attention? Yes or no? Yes. Always like to ask the question. The philosopher Nietzsche said, look, given a big enough why, we can handle any how. The how is not the challenge. It's not the problem. We've got to get clear on the why. All right? So high level, why am I here? And why is my colleague Sam here? Because we're going to be doing this together. Why? Just high level, why do you think that we're here? Share the context the movement. Definitely share the concepts, share the uh, perspective, but literally as far as being in front of the room right now. So Social were, change. Were we on the agenda? No. No. So how, why? Yeah, why are you? Why? Why? Yeah, <laughs> 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 Social change. Social change. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> well, Sorry. fundamentally, fundamentally, we all know this, right? We all know 100% that this is life. Right? The whole blockchain is about connection. This is life, right? Connection. Right? So I'm all about connection. So coming here, and I made the decision 36 hours before this thing began to be here, who flew in from New York, I started connecting with people. I love sharing knowledge that makes a difference. What uh, the architect of the greatest business success story in history called predictive knowledge, predictive wisdom. Wisdom alone is great, but if it doesn't allow you to predict future outcomes with higher probability, then it's just information, it's just data. But when you bring that data together, you triangulate it, and you create a map, you create priorities, that provides you with this called predictive wisdom, right? So how would you like to upgrade your predictive wisdom capabilities? Yes. That's why I'm here. And in the spirit of connection, I happened to bump into John, who is the organizer of this organization. And so I gave him just a copy of my book. I love giving out copies of one of my favorite books. And we just had a conversation five minutes yesterday. This morning at breakfast, he comes up to me and says, would you like to present? Okay, I'm here, to, I'm here to listen, I'm here to learn, all right? So, but I'm also, I present in front of the Fortune 100 and I work all over the world doing this sort of work, okay? And Sam the same, okay? So I'm from New York, he's from Colorado, and so we're here presenting, learning, and then boom, this opportunity came up. So, we're here fundamentally to support all the elements that you put up here and everything that you haven't said. But high level, we're gonna turn this around. 
because I am a student of the gentleman who is really the architect of what I call the greatest business success story never told, and that's a book coming up next year. So if you had to pick a candidate for the greatest business success story in history, in history, what names come to mind quickly? Because we're going to engage in the process this gentleman inspired that transformed not only a company and an industry and a country and really the world, but we're going to turn it right down to you. You're all, we're all going to be executive board members of an organization that is going to support the optimal future of cryptocurrency. You, you want to play that game together? Yeah. Okay? And so the idea is, look, all of us are a heck of a lot smarter than one of us. And the answers lie within. They lie within your heart, your soul, your mind. And we're going to tap that collective genius and come up with a high-level, prioritized map, sequence, of how to individually and collectively support this future. Groovy. Something you want to participate in? Great. Mm -hmm. right. so I always ask that question. Love to get the feedback. Quickly, what names come to mind? Candidates. Satoshi. Satoshi. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. Fantastic. A story that's still being told, right? Yeah, yeah. So if you, if you take that look, take that look today backwards. Who comes to mind generally? Greatest right. business success in history. Ford, Dell. Ford, Dell. Carnegie. Carnegie. Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Steve Jobs. Yeah, this goes on, right? Yeah. I would submit that this gentleman's input, his contribution supports all of them and supports all of our lives in ways that we're not even conscious of. And the process that he inspired in service of predictive wisdom, personally, personal transformation, collective transformation, is one of the greatest gifts that we've been given. So I want to share that with you in a thumbnail, and then we're going to just dive into this process, which is called the North Star Process. Okay? Now, yeah. high level, this gentleman's name is Dr. W. Edwards Deming. Does anyone know who Dr. Deming was? No. Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Okay. Deming is the American, it's like a Forrest Gump in world history. One of the reasons the United States won World War II. He was the, one of the key quality strategists who taught the American war machine, American industry, how to make quality product in World War II. Guns, tanks, planes, everything that functioned like made in Japan does today. Okay? Five years after the war, he's a statistician. He went to Japan to help with the census. The Japanese, we had dropped two atomic bombs. They were spiritually, industrially, in ashes on the ground. Worse than the poorest country on the planet today, right? And he's there helping with the census. And the high command in America can't get anything to work. And so MacArthur says to Dr. Deming, well, why don't you share the methodologies we were doing during the war with Japan? They're desperate. They need it. And when the Japanese understood that the architect of the quality movement that their enemy had used to defeat them, was in their country and willing to share, they jumped at the chance. And Deming made a famous prediction in 1950. He said, look, if you'll follow what I'm going to share with you, I predict within five years you'll be an exporting nation. And the world will, will soon be beating down your door to buy what you make. At that point, Japan was importing everything. And made in Japan, if you remember, Back to the Future was a worldwide joke. Okay? So what do you think the Japanese did? When they knew the architect, who would help the enemy beat them, was willing to share the knowledge, and he predicted within five years, you'll be on your way. What do you think the Japanese did? They filled the room and listened to them. That's exactly what they did. Okay, <laughs> literally. All the heads of industry came in within four years, they beat the target by one year. Four years, they're an exporting nation. The rest is history of the footnote. Okay? It wasn't until we were doing this, uh, falling out of the sky in American business in the 70s, right? Car industry going down, that we rediscovered this gentleman. So he's the Einstein of business and quality. And so quality is the secret ingredient. Quality is no longer a luxury. It's a necessity. Whether you're coding, whether you're delivering a product, a service, an educational institution, it doesn't matter. Would you all agree? That if you don't have quality, you're either mediocre or out of business off the board. Fair? This is the guy. All right? So untold trillions of dollars in value, including that behind Apple, can be directly traced back to the DNA of this gentleman. He inspired a process. The Japanese created a process. He inspired this process, which we're going to engage in now. And that process is called the Hoshin. Hoshin is a Japanese word that fundamentally means inner compass. It's the idea that inside all of us, we have a GPS. I suggest it's there at birth. All of us have a compass, a guidance system in our heart. 
right? And it's in teams, it's in companies, it's in movements. And when we surface this inner compass, make it visible, because if it's not visible, you can't work with it. It's very hard to transform unless you can see it. And most importantly, when we define our target, our ideal aim, our, what the Japanese call our guiding star, our north star, when we define this and get clear about this, which at a high level the process always begins with a question. How many people in this room have a goal or a target in their personal life? Okay. Who would be willing to share something you're working on that you want to improve or transform in your life? Um, relationships within my family. Fantastic. So if you were going to take this process on individually, you'd ask a question. What are the key issues that must be addressed in order for me to achieve and enjoy the highest quality relationships in my family? comes right down to that level. If you wanted to run a marathon in a nice, easy time of, say, two hours or less, <laughs> just seeing if we all had our coffee, OK? Um, you could run that through this process and come up with a map, a predictive map, that would support you getting there. For t this morning, it's going to be, what are the key issues that we must address? It's a we in order to strategically support the optimal future of cryptocurrency. Is everyone with me? Mm -hmm. Be thinking now, what are some of the key issues that, are, that we think have to be addressed? in order to support this, collectively, individually, right? And so when we make this visible, the inner guidance system and our target, and most importantly, we line it up, it's said that the way becomes clearer, the barriers and obstacles fall, the right people and resources show up as if by magic, because now you're on what they call the way. It's very Taoist. You're on the way, the path. And literally, the universe supports you. The last piece is... All of us have these, right? Priorities. Does anyone's priorities ever do this? You're trying to work on your health. You're trying to work on your relationship. You're trying to learn about crypto, right? When the priorities are given best efforts, you're really working hard on them, but they're out of sequence. They're out of order. Do you make as much progress? Of course not. When you line the priorities up, though, they cross-reinforce one another. And they support you getting to your target with maximum grace, maximum speed, and maximum quality. Interesting? Mm -hmm. That's what it's about. So let's turn around and get, and get started. And as we're setting the stage for this, I want to throw the ball to Sam. So this is Sam Sokol. He's my colleague, great friend, and we have been getting engaged on leading this process with organizations around the world. From Stanford to Bank of America to you name it, this, this process and this work has taken me and Sam around the world, working with organizations that are household names and working with individuals. And so the sheet that I passed out there, by the way, if this is capturing your attention, we're going to do something here collectively relevant to the presentation here at Nexus, at the Aspen Institute, on crypto. That's what we're going to walk away with at the end of this session. However, if this has got your attention, simply follow up. I wrote the world's first workbook that takes this process to the individual. You can walk yourself through this and get the answer the higher answer, the deeper answer, to how do you make that reality a reality, right? To take the dream that you've got, whatever it is, higher health, greater financial abundance, it doesn't matter, okay? The process will meet you wherever you are and deliver a prioritized action plan, the same process that's guiding Toyota today, okay? And that's the work we can set your priorities straight. Okay, Sam, go for it. And the, again, this is highly going to be, I've done most of the talking. We're going to, both Sam and I are going to facilitate you through the process now but I want to throw the baton to Sam. So, so the big thing when we were talking about this this morning was like, what's the best thing we can do to be in service to this group of people that we're connecting with? So we picked some of the themes. What was clear to me is as we're looking, talking to coders, we're talking to people that are involved in each aspect of the blockchain, saying, okay, this is for real estate. This is for transparency, financial transactions, political transactions. Everyone's working on something with a lot of intensity and a lot of inspiration. And so it was clear to me that there's not an alignment from that collective sense. A lot of people working towards these things are really, really important. Personal freedom being right behind it. I mean, not aside from it, but part of it. So the question is, if we do this well, right? It's not about Bitcoin. It's not about how one program works. It's about how does cryptocurrency, this question of a vehicle for personal freedom, how does that work when we align these priorities? So that's what we came up with, and the idea that uh, Matthew just shared about the book is that this can apply to anything. This process can be used in any aspect. So if you say, well, that was interesting, but I want to apply this to my life, or hey, I want to work with some other people, it's really great to bring in that diversity 
and it naturally brings into alignment. So that's the process. It's fun. Whatever comes out of this, we don't know yet. I mean, we know what we're, the process does. That's pretty clear. But the fun part is the collaborative synergy. And I don't mean synergy like an MBA throwaway term. I mean real synergy. So I, that's, that's what I'm excited about. That's why I'm here is to say, how can we play in this environment? So let's, let's get to it. And the key word that Sandra shared is play. We don't do enough of it, all right? And the big thing is, of course, as well, I love conferences. I love attending them, and I love presenting at them. And one of the biggest things I notice when I attend is how often it's a one-way deal. You guys notice that sometimes? Mm -hmm. it's, it's your listening. It's like 99 or 100% listening. And that has its place, of course, when you've got people who've got a lot to share. But I always know that I have questions. I have thoughts. I know all of you do, too. And that, wow, what could we create if we actually tapped all that? Right? And we made it a bit more interactive. So that's our target. Our target is to support, strategically support, but let's just go for it. Our target is for this exercise, and this is a demonstration exercise, what's our target? Optimal future of cryptocurrency. How can we support that? Do all of you in the room, does that feel like a target that's 80% perfect for this demonstration? 80%. Some of us might have perfectionist tendencies, but I just want to say 80% perfect, right? Okay. <laughs> because we could, we could try and smith this, but optimal means what? The best, right? Not the most, the best. So we want to, we want to have the best future of, of cryptocurrency, and we want to know it for ourselves and to share. So it's individually, collectively. So this is going to meet everyone where they are. So if that's our target, high level, what we need to do now is we need to do some exploration with you. So we could consider that target at a high level piece here. This is the target, that statement, the question. The question. What does that shape look like? Question mark. Question mark. What else could it be? Uh, the reason. Yes. Name. Yes. A hook. Okay, a hook. <laughs> who's right, who's wrong? Everyone's right, right? Some people say, well, so the more romantic, we're like, that's a half a heart. <laughs> okay, yes, it is a question mark. It is the other things. It is a hook as well. It's just going to have to hook or a magnet because if you form a good enough question, a specific targeted question that's relevant, the key word is relevant, and you stay with it, the question, what happens? It gets straightened out and turns into what? The aha, Eureka, I have found. The question holds the answer, but what did we come to this conference looking for? Questions or answers? Yes, yes. Sure, we came for this. This is where we came from, right? Bless you. However, the front end of getting great answers is what? Well, You've got to start with a really clear target question. And that goes for our lives as well as for teams, as well as for crypto. Okay? So with that in mind, the question, our strategic question, is the top of a gourmet table that we're going to enjoy the most amazing piece with someone we love. What does every table need to be strong and stable? Legs. You better believe it, okay? And Buckminster Fuller, who is one of those unsung, unknown geniuses, yeah. there's a real foundation for Sam's work, as well as mine, says that how many legs are kind of like the best legs for a most stable platform? Tripod, three, right? But I'm suggesting we're gonna come up with maybe four, maybe five strong, supportive legs that would support lifting that target into the future. You all with me? So what we're looking for, basically, is three to five answers. Answers. What must we do, be, or have? Clarity, right? Simple, clear knowledge about what it is. That might be one of them, right? What must we have to support this? It's open game. Who's got a thought of a really high level we must? Something we need. A resource? An idea? I'm going to take the word out clearly and... Simply. So I'm going to write these high level, and then we're going to lock in as a team on what our three to five will be, and then we're going to run them through the prioritization process, which is where the, where the rubber meets the road, the magic happens, okay? So get word out clearly. Was there another word there that you had? Simply. Simply. Yeah. Great. It's, it's complicated. Yeah. Clearly and simply. Get more people involved. Okay, then what did I hear? Get more people Get more involved. people involved, okay? So we're just going to go high level here. More people involved. Love that. Okay, who else has an idea? A critical one. High level. Stability. We've got to have... What about that? Just stability in the markets. 
So we, what do we, what do we do? We, it, it usually starts with we must. The we must is the diving board for the statement, and we want to keep it clear and concise. So we must what around st stability? We must uh, find stability. Find stability, and this is where you tap into this is like you know the millionaire game, right, guys? We got a mastermind group. Stability. We must what? Find it, create it, support it. Go for a word that really is like on the edge. That if we could wave, you know, Harry demand? Potter's wand, <laughs> demand. Well, what, the, what do you mean by stability? Just stability in the markets, because a lot of people. Other consistency. Is that price stability? Yeah. Yeah, but and it's just so stability. many new ICOs and stuff coming out. Mm -hmm. Like I think. It makes it look more like a game than an actual. And therefore, a Ponzi scheme. Right. Therefore, potentially, I mean, there is, it, it, there it, it is. It is that going on. Say again? It is Ponzi scheme. To a degree. Right. So, so he's hit on something right. really powerful with stability. We must shift to usability and not speculation <coughs> and trading. Usability, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what's happening right now, team? Step out of the process. What's happening right now? We're, we're the CEO executive board Correct. of this organization, right? The answers are here. The team genius is phenomenal. You get to engage in a process that taps it. Okay, and makes it practically usable and takes it out of the brain and puts it into life. So one more time, this is good. We must shift to usability and eliminate the trading and speculation. Mm -hmm. We must so, not eliminate, but uh, drastically reduce Usability it. and shift to? Shift to? Shift away from. Shift to or away? Shift to usability and away from trading and speculation. Usability. Okay. Usability. Shift, yeah, I got it. Shift from. to usability. He wants to shift away from. And shift away from speculation. Right. High level, right? right? Great. Who else? Uh, it needs to be alignment in the unity. Okay, so hold on. Hold on. I heard what? Alignment. There, so we must. Unit in unity. Um, I'm kind of a novice to all this. What I'm seeing is all these different cryptocurrencies, like you're saying. And I think they just got to kind of pick one. They got to come together and make that go. Otherwise, it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah, I think that one of the scariest yeah. things I heard yesterday, I mean, well, was a bunch of interesting things, was the fact that Bitcoin point one could all of a sudden become obsolete, and Bitcoin point two is there. The one thing could you could supersede. Say, yeah. One thing you could say about whatever currency, like the U.S. dollar, has been the dollar. Maybe it's fluctuated in value, but it didn't switch. Like all of a sudden, we're doing dollar tomorrow and womp them the next day. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's the one thing that I don't like. So it's like hypothetically, I love, when I came into this concept, it started with the idea: okay, Bitcoin was the mothership, and there was all these branches off of it that we could utilize, and then the system or like the the, 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 the was blockchain, which blockchain beside take Bitcoin out of the scene is awesome, right. especially if you use you know like like I don't know if you guys saw. Uh, Overstock guy, but he's using it to keep the Wall Street in check, and he thinks that he's going to reduce their profit by 75 percent due to just blockchain technology. Forget Bitcoin. So I don't like the idea of I, I'm, I'm all about switching currency into something that's not that's decentralized. I think that's amazing, and all all the benefits around that. Although, wait a minute. Don't be telling me that Bitcoin so, now changes from. Do you know what I mean? Right. All of a sudden, they're no longer in business. Kind of. Correct. Right. Yeah. Like, yes. well, so now we're in John's business over here, or two. Or yeah, or Bitcoin yes. point two. Yeah. But my yes. Bitcoin point one no longer right. functions. If that's the case, that doesn't yeah. make me excited. You know, you bring up an interesting point, but keep in mind the dollar used to be the dollar has been the dollar, but it's it's dramatically different than it used to be. That's yes. right. It was yeah. it was originally right. backed by silver, and and no longer is. It's still called the dollar, but it's dollar two point zero. Yes. Right, and it, and it's and yeah, dollar two point zero with nothing now, no metal yeah. behind it, nothing, yeah. nothing to sell. Right. Yeah. You thought? Yeah. 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 And again, and again, guys, in the interest of time, I want to spread this through the room as well. Okay, so some of us are more vocal, some of us are less vocal, but optimally, even to hear a few key words from all of you adds enormous power to the process. Doesn't mean everyone's got to be on the spot, but I also want to graduate our target here. So you know the target is a great saying: here and then here. Okay, the brain doesn't like the unknown. The brain doesn't like knowing what's coming next. The brain likes to know, because when you know, you can relax and lean into whatever's coming. Is that fair? Yeah, so what down roads. I want to... <laughs> I think that's the big problem with the whole cryptocurrency thing, is we don't know. So it's really about the unknown, yeah. to another degree here too, right? So I want to keep... Well, I guess it is Ethereum, which is better than Bitcoin, and this is going to be better than this. Yes. And I, I'm sure it is better. Yes. But to the, to the masses, they need something 
for a currency that's going to be stable. Alan, I need something that's familiar, but let me just hold the thought. Our aim here, I want to let you know what's coming next so that we can also stay with this and get to the conclusion that's this value added and predictive. Okay? And that's this. We're looking for five maximum statements, high level. And we're going to, as a team, decide which one we think is the most important. We're going to give you that chance individually. Then we're going to go through the process and we're going to see how they prioritize touching the team genius, integrating that. The only way to get there is you've got to hear from everyone, but also concisely. So here, okay. and then here, and then. So I've been trying to articulate this, but it seems like none of these things, whether it's um, adoption or even getting to the point where you know the technical aspects are worked out, so the usability is yes. is good. Is that first it needs to be tapped into getting into people's individual need for economic sovereignty. Is that once you can tap into that on an individual level, then people go, oh yeah, I want to adopt this. I want to use it. That makes it more stable. So when tap individual. Uh, That's interesting. Like their economic sovereignty, just their desire to. I, I, don't know, I think that we all inside of us have some yearning for freedom, and economic freedom is one yes. of the foundational ones. And sovereignty. I like the word sovereignty as well. Okay, so again, we're just getting some high level ideas and endeavoring to get clear. I think you mentioned the, the purpose of a, of a group like this, a mastermind group, and I think uh, individually it's like a light bulb. Uh, you know, it, it light goes everywhere, but if you put it together and you focus it, now you have a laser and that'll go through an inch and a half of steel frying pan in a split second. So I think one of the things to do, you mentioned over here, you know, there's many different cryptocurrencies and where is it going to go? Uh, you've you got all different kinds of marbles in the bag. I think the best thing to do is be able to come to a consensus so we have collectively some sort of unified picture that we can take that encompasses what we need to share with those who know nothing so that they become comfortable in that space. Because until Bitcoin, in my opinion, until Bitcoin gets to the point that my mother can use Bitcoin comfortably, it's not going to be adopted by the masses. And I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to move uh, our, our collective to a different direction. And in order to do that, again, we've got to know what the direction is, and it can't be fragmented. Whatever we come out of a collective thing with, it's got to be concise enough that we could individually go and explain it to someone in a manner that makes sense to them, whether they adopt it or not. Yes. Within because Bitcoin's day, right? biggest problem right now isn't what currency is going to come out on top. Bitcoin's biggest problem is lack of education among the money lunch bucket and Mary Housewife. And that's so, why we're here. Say again? I said that's why we're here when you said lack of education. Yes. So I threw down just through this thoughts. Create a unified, compelling picture for easy use and adoption. Is that, does that essence summarize it, high level? That's it. So again, team, it's not about perfect. It's about can we get the essence of the legs on the table? Is that fair? Yes. Okay, so let's take a step back. Because this process done with a team of this size and in depth would be a minimum of a day. <laughs> okay? And depending on how critical the target was, we might spend a day and a half and do a retreat, which would be great. We're here in Aspen, okay? But our retreat is 50 minutes, approximately. All right? So, what I want to do now is quickly distill and glean from what we've got here what our maximum five statements would be. Now, the beauty of Hoshin is that it focuses you like a laser beam. And it's the beauty of a light bulb. A 100 watt light bulb will light the day, will light the room, metaphorically, will light today. 100 watt light bulb, right? A 1 watt laser will hit the moon. To your point of going through the flying plan, it also will give you incredible spread. One one hundredth of the power. How's that possible? How? Focus. Coherence and focus, right? Coherence. So we're here to get that coherence individually and collectively. The only way to do that is we've got some great data here. Data. It's not predictive yet. It's data. It's the ice warnings on the Titanic, which they never brought together into a comprehensive picture that would have helped them navigate around or not even get into the ice field at full speed, okay? That's another piece. So we've got the data. Let's distill it down into five key statements. Maximum, maximum. Eight words. Eight words, okay? And that's including we must. So really, we've got six to seven word statements right now that we want to create within the next three to five minutes and then shift into the prioritization. So as we look at this, the first one, let's just collectively look at this team because there might be a little bit of duplication here, but I'd suggest we go from the bottom up, okay? Because the bottom up is about creating that unified, compelling picture for easy use and adoption. 
We could smith that all day long, but fundamentally, is that a good? Is that a clear statement of something we need to do? Yes. yes. Okay. We need to. We need to make it easy, and it's got to be magnetic yes. as well, right? So the people can at least. So my grandmother can use it, and then maybe lean into adopting. Is that fair? Yes. So yes. Sam, do you want to be the scribe and just grab? Happy to do it. Grab the bottom one, and I, and we right now we should throw the we must. Keep it we must. I suppose we must. So here we go. The first one that's going to be is create a unified, compelling picture. Create a unified picture for easy use and adoption. Okay, that'll be the first one. Okay, and we all agree that that's probably a really critical leg on the table. Yes. As we're thinking about this. Yeah. Great. So you want to create a unified picture. Unified. I think unified pictures are great for easy use and adoption. We know, yeah. by the way, if you double click unified, it means compelling. It means magnetic. So yeah. keep it nice and concise. The beauty of the process is it forces you to be really focused. The next one was um, tap individual need. Uh, Economic need and the need for sovereignty and freedom. Is that different? Is it similar? Or is it is it mean is it separate enough that we should have that codified it's, as another leg on the table? It has enough of its own. I mean, I think it has to be separate because it, it uniquely defines. Body language is here, guys. I said heads are turning and body. So it's beautiful what happens when a team comes together, a plan comes together, right? So tap individual need for uh, economic freedom, sovereignty. Yeah, sovereignty. Good? Yeah, 80%, right? We're actually, it's talking about literally tapping into the individual yeah, needs. It's a different Good. thing. Got it. Then the next one, this is high level, this, this need for alignment and unity. So let's think about that for a moment collectively. We must what? Is it support it? Is it, is it find it? What is it around alignment and unity, greater alignment and unity? I recognize it. Recognize? Yeah. Overstock takes 60 coins with shapeshift that all one that at barrel of marbles can easily be used and accessed and shifted around just with a keystroke, bingo. So your thought is recognized as the key. Yeah. We're talking about the action word here, guys, right? The verb. What are we gonna do? We need this. We need greater alignment and unity in the community. That's something that, that is central. One of Sam's first thoughts when we literally learned about this presentation was alignment unity, right, Sam? Consensus. Side on. Is it we must think, think proactive? The same thing. Think yeah. proactive. We must what around alignment and unity? Is it supported? Is it created? Is it I think it's created. I mean we did the the Norris and you know the thing you did earlier about our sinners yes. being connected to our purpose. Yes. And then you're aligned. Yes. So I'm trying to think of words to talk about that because it seems like that would be a very important. Would that be alignment and unity? Must facilitate alignment and unity. Mm. Does that work? Enable, facilitate? Enable. Enable. Facilitate. You start drive, with, drive. You started the presentation by saying nothing happens until there's a why. Yes. If you're going to have alignment and unity with people you're talking to, you better discover their collective why that works the best. Because that's the key to unlocking, I think, this whole thing. If, so, I, don't have a, if I don't have a reason to want to know yes. about Bitcoin or deal with this, yes. that's compelling to me, yes. and people are pretty much alike, it can mm -hmm. be a universal need, but if I don't have that need, your conversation's on deaf ears. Mm -hmm. All right, so how do we bake that into alignment and unity? In because seven words or less. It goes into the individual need for the first one. Yeah, that one. I think it goes into We yeah. must define the individuals. It cannot why be sovereignty. All they should be in the So hold on. It, it's a subset then. It's a part of this, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. And the question is economic is, is that sovereignty? Because for me, one of the themes that keeps coming up is it's more than economic. Yes. Yeah. The yes. Bitcoin has, and you know, a lot of other currencies, because it's not just about Bitcoin, right? Cryptocurrency has the potential to drive. Freedom and some other right. things. So, well, is it economic? Do we want to? Uh, you know, a higher level of humanity. So, I mean, I think that's why you have so many people that are sort of touchy feely involved. Mm -hmm. So, suggestion in the interest of time and quality, we must what alignment and unity support. I like to facilitate. Facilitate. Can we go with that? Yeah. We must facilitate greater alignment and unity. Yeah. Boom. That's number three. Eighty percent there. That's eighty. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah. Take that home, guys. Okay. And then we have what? Shift usability and shift away from speculation. I disagree. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 
speculation is when you when you have an entrepreneurial spirit yeah, and you, you are a visionary. Yes. I count myself in that category. Yes. I don't want you to take away my dreams <laughs> or speculation. Right. I was sort of insulted. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And again, everyone, listen, there's a great saying, okay? Everyone's right from where they sit. Right. Okay, you may not agree. You may violently disagree, but they're right. And the only way you're going to get synergy, by the way, and get laser alignment is if you come at it from the standpoint of you're right. Okay, I may not be for XYZ candidate, but I, you're right from where you sit. And if I embrace that, we've got a shot. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, everyone's right from that. But for this room, as the executive level, do we really care about... The, per the perception of the public around speculation, or can we table that? Your thoughts? Well, in all fairness to him, yes. I may be defining the term speculation well, very differently. I meant it very specifically on the, the wild trading of, of coins and, and not, not having usability. <laughs> and if we're going to create a currency, yes. something that is usable, yes. people can get paid in it and can use it to buy things and travel yes. and do things. Sure. Sure. There has to be some stability in that, in my mind. So stability in the actual experience? Is that what you're saying? That we just have stability? Well, I think it ties into what we, the last one there, the first one there. Yes. Something that's easy to use. And, and can we can we bake in that stability into this then? Would you be all right if we baked it in? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And again, we're going to take it sometimes, guys, and we're going to wrap it in there that a little subset of this, just a little subset of easy use and so forth, would be... Stability. Fair? Mm -hmm. Okay? So it's not lost, is my point. Because I see that first bullet as being, we want to drive mass adoption. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So a lot of people are going to run when they just see things going up and down a thousand dollars, you know, in a day. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Now, if we look at more people involved, get more people involved. We must make cryptocurrency fun and practical. Is it spoken to up here? Unified picture, Easy use and option. Yeah, I think tap individual need. Option. It's kind of spoken there, right? So you could say at a high level team that getting more people involved is the outcome of this entire process. Right. You mm -hmm. could say that's a big level result. Is that fair? Yeah. True. Okay. So can we table that? Yeah. yeah. That's the result. So let's yeah. let's focus more on on upstream drivers. What about get the word out clearly and simply? Have we spoken to it here? Unified picture, easy use, adoption, and stability. It's spoken to, isn't it? Great. Yeah. We've got three legs on the table. Is there a fourth that's different from what's up here and what we've spoken to? Let's see if we can surface maybe a fourth, and we're going to run them through the prioritization process. And that's where the aha and the high-level map that you'll all get a copy of, by the way, and we can, we're happy to follow up as a, as a use case mastermind group scenario here. What would a fourth be that's different from those, that's critical? Well, I don't think anybody really talks much about, you know, what's the plan B, what if, you know, what if we lost our grid? What if, if we put our whole economic global state yes. <laughs> on the principle of a digital currency and a blockchain and everything is there. Yes. And there's nothing like this written down on yes, paper, yes. and, you know, I don't know, there's a solar storm and it wipes out our grid. I mean, even pulse, right? Right, I mean, whatever. Yeah, right. it's, a, it's a little bit like putting all your eggs in one basket, So is we don't it, talk about that. So if, we jump in, if I jump ahead with you on this, could we say we must consider all scenarios, right. including plan B? Would that be yeah. fair? I mean, and that's yeah. a really responsible, intelligent thing for us to do individually and collectively. Fair? Yeah. Great. So we must consider all scenarios, <clears throat> including the ones we don't like that are pretty. Including the, the including the unpretty ones. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Because that's later today. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying the downside. What's yeah. the downside? Yes. But you have to spend even five percent on the downside or else you could you'd hit a landmine, right? Yeah. Now question, are we having any, are we having any fun? Yeah. yeah. Seriously, is this, is this a little bit of fun? Yeah. And is there any is there any learning going on? Yeah. And do you get a sense, potentially, possibly, that we might be tapping the possibility of making a difference yes. with this? Can I Please. suggest an alternative? Is, are, is the last bullet getting at we must define a worst case scenario? Yes, it is. And it's meant to be under the umbrella. Okay. It's, meant to, it's worst case, best case. But it's literally, it's also about the plan, if, if it's the thing that we don't want. Right. So we're gonna, for the moment here, let's just do plus and minus. Is that mm -hmm. fair? You guys got it? Yeah. Great. Now we got four. Is there a fifth that's bubbling on anyone's mind? And if there isn't, Sam might have a thought. I might have a thought. 
our esteemed uh, camera technician might have a thought. Um, is there a fifth element, or do we go ahead with these four? If we were to have clarity, if we were to have a unified picture for easy use and adoption, if we were to tap the individual need for economic sovereignty, if we were to facilitate greater alignment and unity, and if we were to consider all possible scenarios, would that get us much farther down the road with more velocity towards uh, what? What's our target again? Optimal. Similar more. Oh, it's right here. Towards <clears throat> strategically supporting the optimal future of cryptocurrency. Would those four critical legs be enough to, su to, to su supply really a strong supportive platform to go forward? Looking at the five, the four there, and looking at our target. Need an action statement, I would think. You know, what's exactly. the, where's the, yeah. you know, we got the idea, but the, we need the, the fuel now, the, the action, the, the decision. The, a plan? The, the or vision? A plan, yeah. Call to action. The call to action. The call to action? Yeah. yeah. Speak to Great that. Ideas moment. are wonderful, but it's the action that makes the difference. And it's that, uh, you know, that's some sort of statement there, some sort of, the table's there, but it's, in a, it's, it's not moving. How do we get it Right. Like the philosophy of this technology. You know, so we must have a plan of action, plan of action. To, bring this, to bring this to life. The right. plan of action is what you really are talking about. Fair? Yes. So we must have a, uh, a robust plan of action. Correct. Is that fair if I put the word robust there? Individually and collectively. Love it. Works for Love it. We must have a robust right. plan of action. And we'll put parentheses I and C, individually and collectively. Again, you know where this is going. High level, okay? In sales and marketing, they say you need to have a 30-second elevator pitch that grabs everybody's attention yep. and makes them want to learn more. You got I think it. we need a 30-second collective elevator pitch for the audience. Yeah. 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 Which we're talking, I mean, it's covered here. That's it's covered here. Right. Yep. And by the way, take us away. Is any, <coughs> we've all heard the term elevator pitch in our time, correct? Yeah. What's the purpose of an elevator statement? Get somebody's attention. Get their attention. I have, a, I have a piece on this I want to share with you in five Not seconds. Not to do a presentation, but to invite an opportunity. To do yes, it. exactly. So I want to share with you in five seconds, take this away, okay? What, what does an elevator do? Up and down. It goes up. It goes, it lifts. So if your elevator statement is really going to be effective, it needs to lift the other person up in 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. It's right there on the word. An elevator speech is not just about, hey, I've got something to sell, I want to share something with you. It's about lift that other person with, with your perspective or your opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. When you do that, how does elevation. It, how does it make the other person better? And feel. They gotta feel it, right? Yeah. So just take that away. It's fun. It's right there in all our lives. Elevator speech is like, oh my god, it's gonna hit me with an elevator speech, you know? But in reality, it's let's lift. Okay. So if we have these five, we're saying strategically high level, we got a we got a much better shot of supporting our target, the optimal future of cryptocurrency. That's what we're saying. So now what I'd like you to do is exercise the number one skill of an effective leader, according to the Einstein of quality. The number one skill. So quickly, if you had to think of a quality of a leader. One word, the quality of a great leader, what are some of the words that come right to mind? Communication, being able to bring things together. Communication, synergizer, what else? Yeah. Decisive. Influence. Decisive, influence, what else? Any other key words? Great leader. Think of anyone in history, anyone you're working with. Dynamic, in sync, values, integrity, the list goes on, right? What I'd like you to do right now, and we're going to do it really high level speak collectively as a team, is exercise this word, which Dr. Deming said is what we're all looking for, prediction. The ability to predict future outcomes with greater probability. Okay? People who we follow and want to be a part of the effort, they make predictions that come true more often than not. That builds tremendous what? Trust. Trust and loyalty, which is the absolute gold standard of any organization. Fair? So his entire methodology was to make each of us better predictors and increase our what? Predictive intelligence. We need IQ, we need EQ, but this is the standard here. We need to increase our ability to predict future outcomes in our lives and collectively and for the world with greater probability. So I'd like you to predict. I'd like you to look at these five right now, team. Do you, do you guys have pens? Does anyone have pens? If not, we can do it collectively. Great, if you have pens, let's just act, and we can just call, call the room here. Look at these five, and I'd like you to rank them. Rank them high level. Which one do you think individually is the number one? You had to pick one. You're forced, forced ranked to pick number one. Which one might it be? Which one might it be? Okay. So what I'd like you to do in the next, like, you know, two, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, to high level, we're going to just take the time and predict the top three. Okay. What would your top three be? 
You can be succinct. If you're going to make a note in your phone or on paper, would it be creating a unified picture for easy use and adoption? Would it be to tap the individual need for economic sovereignty? Facilitate greater alignment and unity? Consider all possible scenarios and have a robust plan of action individually and collectively. What would be your one, two, three? Make a note. Make a mental note. Okay? 30 seconds. It's not a test, but we're going to wave these through the process at a fairly high speed. All right. Call out your number one. Yeah. Who's got create? Raise your hand if you've got create unified. Let me see the hands. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven of you are calling this number one. Great. Does it now for individual need for economic sovereignty? Call out number one. Anyone give it number one? Mm -hmm. Number one. So we've got a little bit of divergence in opinion here. Does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. So we've got one number one here. Great. Did anyone else give us a number? You've got two, you've got two number ones, two number ones there, but I would modify it, tap an individual need, get to people's need for sovereignty. I'm not saying economic sovereignty. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about sovereignty, period. Yep, and let's bake that in. Let's bake into the understanding. So we've got seven people giving this first one a number one, one person this one. Does anyone have a number one or anywhere else here on the table? Okay, great. Number two. How many people have unified pictures number two? Let me see a show of hands. Okay, so then we've got We've got, uh, got one, number two, and then how about uh, easy use and adoption? Anyone give that a number two? No, that's the next one, tap individual. Tap individual, yes, perfect, tap individual. That's number two? Okay, so we've got uh, one, number two, and then how about facilitate greater alignment and unity? Anyone give that a number two? No? And then what about consider all possible scenarios? That's number two? Great, so we've got one, two, three. No. two number two? Three. I'm more for that too. Three? three? Oh, yeah. good, okay, so you've got three people who gave that a number two. Great. And then how about robust plan of action? Anyone give that? That's number two? Great. So again, what we're looking for here is there's a little bit of a spread in the room. Does everyone see it? Now, with that thought in mind, if, you're, if one of your priorities is out of order, they're all affected. There's drag on the system. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And so collectively, what are we going to do? Align these, right? So we're going to do that now. And so here's how we do it. So Sam, I'm going to have you just read them. And we're going to take two of these, the top two right now. As a team, we're going to run these through the heart of the Hoshin North Star process, which is where we weigh them, not from a sense of importance, but from a sense of priority. Which one comes first? So what do we have as the first well, one? Why don't we shorten it and just call this one uh, easy use adoption. Okay. It's just It'll still be the big concept. Easy use and adoption. And the Great. next one, let's just call it uh, individual sovereignty. So... In individual sovereignty, right? Okay. Hold on. Okay. And then let's look at these two team. As we look at these two, easy use and adoption, unified picture, easy use and adoption, and individual sovereignty, tapping that need. They're connected. Which one comes first? In order to hit this target, we want to support strategically the optimal future of cryptocurrency. One of them comes first. Which one do we start with? Individual sovereignty. Easy use and adoption or you won't get individual sovereignty. Oh, well, this, and hold on. Everyone's right from where they sit. Everyone's right from where they sit, team. One is create a unified picture. It's creating the picture for easy use and adoption. The other one is tap that individual need. So it's going into the need, the individual need for economic sovereignty. So think about that. You've got to have one to best support the other. We're going to get both. But we want to start with one. And well, where's the not, most power? If you're not, if I haven't turned the person on, brought them into the here, vote, right, in the sovereignty of something that they want. Yes. If I didn't hit their heart, like their heart. I've done that, and then the next thing will be, well, how? Okay. Because even in my so this is the why. The how, the easy use was yes. second. This is the how, then, you're suggesting? And this is kind of yeah. like, okay, yeah. pardon me, that this is the why. That's, that's, the the that's, the why. That's, that's the why. That's the reason. That's yeah. the reason. And this is yeah. kind of how. Yeah. Can we go with that? Yeah. Resolution, yeah. not compromise. Great. So we're saying, look, we're going to go like this. We know they're both critically important, but if we're going to weigh 51%, if we're going to put 51% of our energy and investment, we're going to start here. And that's going to flow into and support this outcome. You guys got it? <laughs> you're becoming emerging Hoshian masters. <laughs> right in front of us, okay? So now, number three. Let's go, uh, let's go facilitate alignment and unity. Great. So we're going to facilitate 
alignment. Alignment and unity. So, if we look at facilitate alignment and unity and what's our other one? Create a unified picture for easy use and adoption. One of them is upstream, one of them is more downstream. Where do we start looking at just these two? Forget this one here. Facilitate alignment and unity is downstream for ease of adoption. Mm -hmm. I agree. Look at it. So, if we create a unified picture for easy use and adoption, and we do this piece, you're saying? I'm saying an easy use and adoption will facilitate alignment and unity. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yes. They're almost, they're almost the same thing. Second? They're almost the same thing, I think, those two. One comes after the other. So the yeah, more people you get involved, together. then those collective energies, they, they create alignment and unity. We agree at a high level? Uh, we agree at a high level? Um, facilitate great alignment and unity. I don't almost think it's like, like, almost seems like an outgrowth out of mm -hmm. why of individual sovereignty. Hold Do that off for a second. Okay. Just these two. Okay. okay. So it, it seems like facilitate facilitating some alignment and unity mm -hmm. with, is going to help form that picture. Mm -hmm. But the picture is almost like the action plan. The reason I didn't have action plan in my top three uh -huh. is action plans last. So now I'm starting to see that the first one is almost part of an action plan. Mm -hmm. that's, uh -huh. the way, that's what it's looking at. So part of the question I think here, uh, yes. for me as I read this, facilitate is the who, right? Because I think about facilitate greater alignment and unity, would that be, I think a lot of times people are saying on one side you've got the state, right? And on the other side you've got the individual when you talk about this continuum. Yeah. So the question is, is it one side or the other? Is facilitation part of that? In other words, if you have this, this bigger container, the who is part of the question. And I don't, I don't feel like this is clear, like who? So who drives easy use of adoption? Aha. Uh -huh. So you mean does this? That, I mean, does that resonate with? Yeah. OK. So yeah. the who-ness here, get clear here. And if we do that, if we get clear on the who is facilitating this piece, that's all of us, it's others, that will then support easy use and adoption. Is that what we're saying? Bottom up? Yeah. Flip the arrow? Can we go with it as a, as a room, as a team? Yeah? Great. So. Looking at that, this is a reverse arrow then, this one's going out. Then, how about facilitate alignment and unity and tap that individual sovereignty? Looking at these two, where do you start? You have to come, you have to be here again as well. Tap the individual reason, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, that's clear and straightforward. Okay, and we got two left. So then the last, the fourth one right here is, what is it, Sam? I all po consider all possible scenarios. So consider all possible scenarios. Great. And individual sovereignty, tapping it. Which one do we start with, with these two? Individual sovereignty. Again, start here. Start with the reason for leaning in in the first place. Tap a, re a person's reason for even being interested. That's the why. Fair? Yeah. yeah. That's the one. And then, how about easy use and adoption? And consider all scenarios. Look at these two. Which one do you best start with for maximum firepower? Yeah, start consider, consider all possible consider scenarios. Consider scenarios. You have to have this, don't you? Mm -hmm. The best, the worst, yeah. the realistic, fair? Yes. Can we go bottom up? Yes. Yes. Great. Done. Facilitate alignment and unity. And consider all possible scenarios. Remember, we're talking about who here. That was an element of the uh, alignment and unity was who. What do we think there? You have to start with your people, you have to start with your table. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to start with your team. Yeah, yeah. you can't yeah. know what all possible scenarios are if you don't have to reveal it. Top down? Mm -hmm. Does it hold? Yeah. You make it work? 80%? Mm -hmm. yeah. This is about the who. We've kind of gone into the who on this one, so let's hold that thought. Great. And then we got one last one, which is what? Robust plan. Robust plan of action. Robust plan of action. Great. This should be quick. And we'll get to the outcome in 60 seconds, and then we'll have more, more work to do. So robust plan of action. Robust plan of action. Fantastic. And consider all possible scenarios. Where do you start between those two? Consider it first. I this? Think, I think you have to consider the all scenarios before you implement a plan. I think the plan, the plan comes last in everything. Yeah. 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 Putting it into action, 
You're saying you have to do this upstream to inform the plan? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is the strategic planning in a sense. Yeah. Got to do this, and then that goes into, okay, yeah. what are we going to do, and when, when gonna, who's going to do it? Fair? Yes. A lot of languages there? Great. Super. So like so. Then, robust plan of action, individual sovereignty, tapping it, etc. Look at the two. Where do you start? Starting again with interest, yeah. right? The why. Great. Top down. And then, how about easy use and adoption? Come right around here. Easy use and adoption and robust plan of action. It has to be adoptable first. Top down, correct? Yeah. Got it? Yeah. And then last but certainly not least, facilitate alignment and unity, a bit of the who, and robust plan of action. Top down. Is that a top down as well? Yeah. See it, right? Mm -hmm. So, the Hoshin is complete. The map is revealed. And what do we do now? quickly is what I would do is we're going to do them top down, one through five, and so we're going to decode it. We decode it by the lines of driving influence. You'll all get a copy of this, and it's in that book, okay? One, two, three, four. Four lines out, okay? Zero lines in. Our number one driver, right here, it's revealed. Start here. Don't pass go until we do more work on this one, right? Many people predicted this, but not everyone did. If any of your priorities are out of order, there's drag on the wing. You guys got it? Yeah. This just took the collective team genius and sequenced it. The left brain needs a top-down list. Here we go. That's number one. One line of influence out. That's one out. And we've got one, two, three, three lines of influence in. Here we've got out, one, two, three, three outs, and one in. Here we've got zero. Zero outs. Check it out. Zero outs. And we've got four lines of influence in. We got one, two, two lines out, and two lines in. Everyone see it? Yeah. So number one is individual sovereignty. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, facilitate that alignment and unity. Everyone got that? Yeah. That's number two in descending order. And so that means our number three is consider all possible scenarios. That's number three. Wait. And number four is easy use. And number five is what? The plan of action. Nice. Now, this is this my process? No. No, we did. It's yours. Yeah. It's yours. It's the team genius. Okay. I facilitate you through something highly predictable. And by the way, this got to, uh, to number one. They didn't get there because they're Japanese. They got there with the teachings of an American that they took to heart, just like the best companies on the planet. And this process aligns <coughs> all the things we need to do so that we're working on the right things in the right order, okay? So high level, now we're looking top down. Now, by the way, in the West, we put the most important things in a grocery list where? Top. top of the page, right? Waterfall style. Much easier to start with a waterfall at the top and flow. High level predictions were, were a little off. Some of you predicted it, some of you didn't. If we had more time, we would have done all five. You get the idea. And there's all sorts of randomness with a team. But when you line it up and go through this process with quality and dialogue, you get the map, the way. The last takeaway I want you to think about here that is so incredibly powerful and at the same time so simple is this. There's a category. The Hoshin reveals three primary categories. Three primary categories. And here they are. I'm going to put them right next to the list Sam's got here, okay? So, the top third. Hoshin can be decoded a third, a third, a third. The top third. I'm going to suggest that uh, Really, at a high level, it's probably the split is here. It's a category called foundation. Foundational. Don't pass go until you have a strong foundation. F for foundation. So we have to tap that individual need for sovereignty. That's the foundation for the whole process and the target. The middle drivers, I would say two and three, are A for action. We've got to take continuous action to what? Facilitate that alignment and make sure we're not just considering once, but tapping back and forth. Fair? The scenarios. Which means the bottom category is what? Top is foundation, middle is action, the bottom are what? They're more, they're more the results. They're more the results. The unified picture, that's going to be a result of us working one, two, three. Does everyone see it? And what's the big result? Unified plan. And what's the big result of that? Probably drawing more people into the space. What's the acronym? F-A-R. If you want to go farther and faster towards any target, personal, professional, global, you need to step back with the people in the room and discover the far sequence. 
Because when you got the far sequence, you got the wind at your back, you got the laser alignment, and you got higher probability and predictability that your actions are going to lead to the target. Make sense? How many people learned something in the last 55 minutes? Great. So I want to ask you all, in the spirit of continuous improvement, in the spirit of Kaizen, which is the Japanese word for continuous improvement they created in honor of Dr. Deming, is this. I asked this question in 30 seconds. It's called plus delta. What do you enjoy about our time together? In a word or two, high speed. Focus. Focus. Great. What else? Synergy. Synergy. Lovely. What else? Interactive. Great. What else? Speed. Speed. Yeah, it was very high speed, okay? Speed. What else? Productive. Productive. Fantastic. Productive. Is there any other thoughts that you enjoyed about our time together? Results. Results. Goal-oriented. Yes, results. Goal-oriented. Awesome. If we were going to do this again, if we had the, the uh, opportunity to do something like this again, what would we do to make it better? In a word or two. More time. <laughs> 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 we worked on how to do that with cryptocurrencies. Say again? We worked on how to do that yes. with cryptocurrencies. Well, and that's, that's the aim. That's what it's a gift you with the process, okay? Anything yeah. else we do to improve it? More participants. More participants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Could we have done this for the entire room? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we had three hours, we could have actually tapped the entire audience and come up with maybe eight of these big guys. You need more yeah. paper. And <laughs> more paper. How big a group have you done this with? Oh, I've done it with hundreds. 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 Yeah, hundreds. Okay. So, thank you so much. Sam, thank you. Thank you.